Insanity is an ancient affliction, perhaps as old as humanity itself. For much of history, the only thing as painful as the madness was the way mankind tried to deal with it. We've tried to lock it away, cut it out, shock it or burn it out, but the nightmare refuses to disappear. Madness has always been with us. In ancient cultures, insanity was believed to be the result of a physical affliction, an imbalance of the four body fluids. The brain was the organ of the mind and susceptible to disease. But it wasn't until the Middle Ages that madness was proclaimed a sign of the devil, a punishment by God. Between 1460 and 1680, tens of thousands of mentally ill, mostly women, were burned at the stake as witches or heretics. Inhumane treatment persisted throughout the Renaissance. Victims of mental illness were cast into asylums and prisons, shackled and chained and left to rot in their own waste. By the 19th century, madness had become a subject for science. Still, new techniques for study, confinement and suppression of lunacy were little more humane and no more productive than what had come before. With the 20th century and the birth of psychiatry, the disease of paranoia, withdrawal and hallucination was defined and named. Schizophrenia, the affliction of the fragmented mind. Modern therapies like electroshock and lobotomy could still be abusive. Science had tracked the nightmare to the brain, but man was still determined to cut it out. The first real breakthrough in treatment came in 1951 with the discovery of neuroleptic drugs in France, powerful medications which diminish the experience of psychosis. Numbed by these powerful drugs, people with schizophrenia could return to a life outside of the walled institutions. But medication can only moderate the symptoms, the experience of a life lived in constant sensory overload, captive to a brain unable to tell the difference between what is real and what is imagined.